What is the US government hiding about President Kennedy's assassination? Decades later, the world is still seeking the truth. The US government has long withheld key Kennedy-related files from public disclosure. President Trump vowed to release them all, then suddenly backtracked. Was he afraid of something? NHK worked with a group of 66 campaigners for the truth and unearthed information that challenges the official account. One organization stands out in the emerging picture. The CIA, America's Central Intelligence Agency. It has always denied any involvement in Kennedy's death. From documents and testimony, we reenacted Lee Harvey Oswald's path to Dallas. So Japan is the genesis. While serving as a US Marine, Oswald was stationed in Atsugi, Japan. Marks again, you dirty Soviet spy. <laughs> Crush authority. Never thought I'd meet a bunch of revolutionaries in Japan. That's where he was approached by a man who said he was with the CIA. There are women in here whose strings are being pulled by the Soviets. Midori lived in Yokohama. Come, said my soul. Mom, have you heard of the manifesto of the Communist Party? Mom. In Oswald's life, the shadows of poverty and loneliness loom large. You can get away. It's not too late. He became a devoted Marxist and even defected to the Soviet Union. However... Oswald is a pawn. Pawns are disposable. Let both sides begin anew the quest for peace. In January 1961, John F. Kennedy became the 35th President of the United States. It was an event that set Oswald hurtling toward a devastating finale. The trigger was pulled on the Kennedy assassination six months earlier, when Dallas witnessed another shooting. I've left whatever money I can to. You and the baby have enough to live on $10 a week for two months. If I'm alive, if I'm alive and in jail, I'll be in the jail at the end of the bridge we always cross to go into town. General Walker. You what? I don't know if I hit him or not. Why don't you... ask me anything else. He told me not to ask any more questions. Please, Heinz. No! <laughs> he said he was a very bad man. That he was. Leader of fascist organization. Maybe if Hitler be killed sooner, many life would be saved. I said that may be true, but it is not right to use rifle to take someone's life. 
Did he say how long he'd been planning this? He said uh, two months. But uh, I think perhaps based on behavior, maybe more. Would you like to take a short break right now? No, oh, thank you. Better get it over with. Oswald's true motive remains obscure, but Marina testified that soon after the Walker shooting, something puzzling occurred. Several days later, the Morenshield stopped by. George de Morenshield, said to be Oswald's closest friend, helped the Oswalds on their return from the Soviet Union. Izvinite, što pamijal, prahidite, šnova kamenjeg begošći. Spasiba za padrak. Can you say? Ah, sure. Lee, why did you miss? I could see Lee look at me. He suspect I tell Morin Schultz about it. But I thought Lee told Morin Schultz. What are you talking about? General Walker. Come on, man, I'm joking. Lighten up. I could Come on. see his expression change. He was, he was speechless. Years after Kennedy's assassination, and right before a government inquiry, de Morinshield died in an apparent suicide. But before his death, he revealed crucial details. When Kennedy assassination researcher Dick Russell interviewed George de Morinshield, he got a name. J. Walton Moore was a friend of de Morinshield's. CIA agent J. Walton Moore. Moore was the CIA representative in Dallas. It's my understanding that he asked de Morinshield to take care of this young man on behalf of the CIA and you know make sure what's uh, the, what he's see what he's up to, see what he's doing, help him get connected in, in Texas. In the fall of 2019 came a major new development. The setting was a conference featuring the 66 key campaigners. In Kennedy's situation, you see his head look back and his back follows. Well, people say, well, now, how could, you know... Attending was Oliver Stone, director of the hit film JFK and one of the 66, as well as journalists, doctors, lawyers and other experts. One presenter in particular made a huge impact. Ralph Moet Larson is going to be the closest person that you probably are ever going to come across that's going to resemble James Bond. <laughs> Former CIA official Ralph Moet Larson. He was formerly in the CIA for 23 years. Um, he had a variety of domestic and... This is the the novel version I would write of how a handful of CIA officers did it. So it's kind of a roadmap. There's something key about Walker. It's how you look for motive. Moet Larson says the Walker shooting prompted a rogue faction in the CIA to start plotting against the president. Well, so these are different medals we get in the, in the CIA for different things, and... Moet Larsen, former chief of the CIA's Europe division, has a distinguished reputation in the intelligence community. He retains deep loyalty to the CIA and believes that the organization itself was not involved in JFK's assassination. 
So why does he point the finger at CIA personnel? The one thing I am embarrassed about as a CIA officer are unwillingness to look into this seriously and the cover-ups that occurred historically into not coming clean on what the agency's testimony should have been. The hunt, the search, the intellectual curiosity is so important for our country because it involves truth. It involves our identity. It involves doing the right thing. Does he have documents that prove it? No. According to Moet Larsen, there is virtually no chance that documents proving rogue CIA personnel were involved still exist. So what leads him to suspect CIA elements? It was 23 years as a CIA case officer who knew a lot of crazy people in the CIA. He bases his suspicion on his own long years of experience as a CIA case officer. It is case officers, he says, who plan covert operations, recruiting and manipulating human assets to carry them out. That is why the Walker shooting is key. De Morenshield would have told the CIA that Oswald was the culprit, but they took no action. That indicates a CIA case officer's involvement. I think the key was he wasn't arrested uh, in, the, in the sense that he has the, what we call the pitch, pitch, pitch. A pitch in general, a pitch, is when you recruit someone to work for you. If the CIA made the pitch to Oswald, this is Moet Larsen's interpretation of how it may have gone. I'm gonna go take a piss. Sorry. I know what you did. Well, my name is Maurice Bishop. And just say, I'm uh, Maurice Bishop. I just made that name up. You tried to kill Edwin Walker, did you not? Now you listen. You know the rifle? You know, everything, you have the evidence. You have two options. You could turn yourself in to the Dallas police, the FBI, accept your punishment. Or you work with us and live a new life. Are you trying to threaten me? No. We're presenting you with an opportunity. You were discharged from the Marines. You defected to the Soviet Union, and when you came back with no job, you shot Walker. That's three strikes. You've done a lot of other things that were disloyal. This is your last chance. You work with us. And you work with us. You do what we tell you to do. You do what we tell you to do for your country. You won't just save yourself, Lee. Save yourself, Lee. You will be a hero. They literally blackmailed him, and he essentially became an agent off the books. If it's a CIA rogue, operation to kill the president from April to November, it's elegant and simple. It's not complicated. It's not a movie plot. It's not an Oliver Stone movie with, with respect for him. It's not that. It's a CIA operation planned by professionals. A retired high-level CIA officer 
making a bombshell case with his insight as an insider. How do other CIA insiders assess his version? This is retired CIA senior official Milton Bearden. Like Moet Larsen, he has years of experience as a case officer. And, and I have a lot of respect for uh, young uh, um, Rolf uh, Moet Larsen. If he studied it very intensely and thinks it's something else and that it was possibly rogue members of the agency and, 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 and that, that pulled together a great conspiracy on this, you know, he can have that, you know, I let him have that idea. My one problem is that after decades since Kennedy was shot in Dallas, if it was a conspiracy, it never leaked. The king in a checkmate. David Hunt is a former CIA New York station chief who had recently joined the agency at the time of the assassination. I was really very surprised and the assertion that an agency officer uh, would be involved in a, in a plot to assassinate the president just to me is uh, not possible. What do you think of uh, the conclusion of Warren report? Do you believe that? No, I don't. Well, why? Could you tell me? I, I, just, I just think it's not realistic. Other CIA veterans have grave doubts. But Moet Larsen says certain people do at least fit the profile of someone who might have been behind the assassination. One of the things culturally I don't know if I've emphasized enough is there are so few case officers in the agency anyway, but particularly case officers with common backgrounds and languages and, and serving in a certain division area. Everybody knows each other. A case officer is responsible for operations in a specific region. In the 1960s, it seems there were a few hundred case officers around the globe. Who could have accessed the Oswald file? Moet Larsen focused on case officers in the domestic contacts and Western Hemisphere divisions. I would say there couldn't have been more than a dozen to two dozen people who would fit the description of a, of a credible mastermind. And then you begin to look for evidence by looking deeper at each of the potential suspects. Personal motives and connections could hold the key. How might that work in practice? So the one you want to look at is, you know, if you take a, a name, you could look at someone like Jake Esterline. And the other one was, was Walden Moore. So here are two people that are at least circumstantially implicated as people you would want to focus on. A man closely linked to De Morenshield. Dallas Station Representative J. Walton Moore and Jacob Jake Esterline. There's probably something personally binding between those persons. They have to be people who really trust each other. One of the things I found that's just striking is the number of people that are in the covert action business in the early days of the agency who came right out of the Office of Strategic Services in World War II and transferred over to CIA. As Walton Moore was in OSS with Westerline in the same battalion in Burma. Esterline is one example of a case officer who could be imagined to have a clear motive. He was CIA project director for the Bay of Pigs invasion in Cuba. Under Castro's rule, Cuba embraced communism and aligned itself with the Soviet Union. The US military and the CIA, among others, wanted to bring down Castro's regime. But President Kennedy did not authorize full air cover. The operation failed, and many of Esterline's operatives died. Any unilateral American intervention in the absence of an external attack, 
upon ourselves or an ally would have been contrary to our traditions and to our international obligations. Moreover, Kennedy forced out his then CIA director and deputy director to take responsibility for the Bay of Pigs failure. The president even considered breaking up the CIA. The resentment toward the president among the CIA was about to explode. You must be in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Another former intelligence official familiar with the atmosphere inside the agency at that time is Ray McGovern. When I entered the agency, we were treated to a lecture by a operations officer. Uh, he uh, gave us several accusations about how John Kennedy had no guts, had no courage, and was soft on communism, and didn't live up to his promises at the Bay of Pigs. And I, at the time, being a, a young, young 20s, I said, well, you know, this is really bizarre. This fellow works for President Kennedy like I do. Why all this hatred? Why all this, uh, why all this invective? The Soviet nuclear weapons program in Cuba was advancing rapidly. If nuclear war were to break out, global casualties were projected to reach tens of millions. McGovern says elements within the CIA were developing a warped patriotism that justified any and all means in the name of defending America. You don't know about Soviet attitudes. We have to do everything we can to make sure that the communists don't get anywhere near the Western Hemisphere in Cuba, and that when we have a chance to zap them, we zap them, even if it costs 10 million US lives. Crazy. This is a patriotic thing. We get rid of this guy, and then we can protect ourselves against these goddamn communists. If there were rogue CIA agents stoked by a sense of patriotic duty, what linked them to Oswald and the Kennedy assassination? The Warren Commission's official finding was that Oswald was a lone assassin. To Moet Larsen, this has the hallmarks of a typical piece of intelligence tradecraft. Great chess player always thinks through the end game and then plans the, the game to go, go towards that end game. The end game was to kill the president and have everybody believe it was a lone gunman. And make Lee Harvey Oswald look like the lone person involved. In every operation, cover story is, is essential. The cover story, a scheme to conceal the true identity and activity of operatives. Three months until the Dallas parade. We need to make our decision soon. Age 24. Grew up in Dallas. He's our guy. His family? Father died before he was born. Mother changed jobs and husband numerous times. He's a lonely kid who grew up in poverty most of his life. Poverty and lack of affection have made him an escapist. A lonely boy who ran away into an imaginary world. Very good. He moved around a lot. Got picked on in school, became antisocial, stopped going to school, and became obsessed with spy movie. Excellent. His inferiority complex made him obsessed with heroism. Anything else? By age 15, he was identifying as a Marxist. Wow. Hey, Mom, have you ever read Manifesto of the Communist Party? Mom. Mom. We're starting to develop a clear image of our perpetrator. Said he wanted to kill Eisenhower. That's rather vicious. OK. He's got a deep-rooted resentment against authority. He constantly seeks new environments, 
and denies his current circumstances. At age 18, while serving as a Marine in Atsugi, criticized U.S. imperialism. Now, he may have been under the influence of a Japanese woman. His first love? Turns out the girl was KGB. Clever bastards. That's the light. Still shine for you? 10,000 years from now, people will read about us in history books. I want history to see me as a hero. And the desire to play some kind of role in history. After that, he defected to the Soviets. He sought out KGB spies who had infiltrated us. Oh, my. No. And he went of his own volition. He followed his tenets of communism. Why do you wish to defect to the Soviet Union? It's based on my political beliefs. I'm a Marxist. Disillusioned by the Soviet Union, he returned home. The USSR of his dreams had been shattered. He was labeled a traitor when he came back. His life was real hard. You can't leave the baby alone even for a moment. Do you understand? Stop it. A mother can't leave her child. Never. His resentment pushed his political ideology into violence. Now, Walker is an anti-communist, extreme right-winger. Crystal clear line of reasoning. How's the investigation into the case? It's going nowhere. There are no suspects. Are there any witnesses? None. Great. After the finale, the perpetrator will be identified. It will be the same individual as the Walker incident. A vicious crime motivated by political ideology. So... We have Checkmate. And they promise him, if I were handling him, it's like, yeah, it's hard to imagine this as a CIA officer, it sounds so monstrous, but if I'm his handling officer, I'm reassuring him. I'm saying, once you, we do this, Lee, and we save the country, remember what we're doing here. We're saving the country. This will save our country. This will save our country. We've got to do this for the country, for the vice president's aware, whatever. That's what I would do anyway. You can't check. No fact checks. I said, hey, but don't worry. After you're done, you're going to get exfiltrated. Don't worry. Once you're done, you'll be exfiltrated. The day before Kennedy was shot, Oswald, then living apart from Marina, visited her at the home of a friend with whom she was staying. When he came on the weekend, yes, yes he would have been in that room over there. Together with Marina. Yes, exactly. And the first one child and then two children. Marina testified about her final encounter with her husband that night. Let's rent an apartment and live together again. I told you. I don't want to. It's much better if you visit us here at Ruth's on the weekends. Much cheaper to live this way. We'll start a new life tomorrow. New life? New life with proper working washing machine and a car. Yes. I 
promise. Because I discovered a light on in the garage, I figured he probably was in the garage for a while that evening. I learned later that he had made a wrappings of uh, paper to wrap the rifle in to go back to the school book depository. And on the fateful day, the same model of rifle used to shoot at Walker was taken into the Texas school book depository. Was Oswald instructed to do that? Was he being made to look like a lone wolf? Jacket and my smokes. Where's my jacket and my smokes? I was heading to lunch and I had gotten downstairs and had realized that I left my cigarettes and my jacket upstairs. So I went back upstairs to go get it and. Yes. Forget Summit? Yeah, yeah, man, I forgot my jacket and my smokes. And what are you doing up here? Just taking a break. Shut the door by the elevator on your way down, will you? Uh, looking from every window here in downtown Dallas, and it was a wonderful welcome. As the oh, and look, VIP seats. Hey, hey. That way, that way. Uh, I know you know you have to see Kennedy. You just want to see Jackie. The Warren Commission, the US government's official investigation, concluded that after the president had passed, Oswald fired three shots at him from a window on the sixth floor. Warren Commission said without any doubt that they expressed no doubt that Oswald was the one who uh, fired all the shots. I doubt it. Working with researchers, NHK investigated the series of events on the day of the assassination. A lot of the evidence indicates that it was right here at the grassy knoll. Some of those witnesses were eliminated, but uh, there was definitely a gunman seen in this area. We combed through the depositions of some 200 eyewitnesses interviewed by the government. Fifty-five heard shots from the direction of the book depository, behind the president's car. But 30 said they heard shots from the vicinity of the grassy knoll, ahead of the car. But the Warren Commission report did not incorporate these accounts, stating, there is no credible evidence that the shots were fired from any other location than the book depository building. Here. 
Do you know this man? Yes, yes. Yes, he does work here, he does. And you're sure? Absolutely, 100%. Let's go. Eyewitnesses placed Oswald in the second floor lunchroom 90 seconds after JFK was shot. And on the sixth floor, 35 minutes before the shooting, according to the report. But we now know that the government suppressed disclosure of records that differ from the Warren Commission account. Notes taken by an FBI agent who interrogated Oswald after his arrest state Oswald then went outside to watch the parade. And testimony from others who worked in the building backs up his account. One woman is said to have seen Oswald on the first floor at 12.25 p.m., five minutes before the assassination. Crucial information. Why would it be excluded from the official findings? The problem is, this guy has not directly criticized our man. Not even once. That isn't necessary anymore. We can lead him there with this file. We'll never find a better fit than him. Good. Was it perhaps a cover story? created by rogue CIA agents. That would match Moet Larsen's analysis. If Oswald had really acted on his own, it is hard to explain his perplexing actions after Kennedy was shot. Narrowly avoiding being hit by a car, Oswald boarded a public bus, then quickly got off and caught a taxi. Examination of the events suggests he was panicking as he tried to escape. But he doesn't plan his own escape. And my contention is a good explanation for why he didn't plan his escape is he didn't think he would need to have an escape plan. I've planned exfiltrations of agents myself. The way it works is you, you give them a plan ahead of time, in a sedan, it's this color, this license plate, or, and, and, and we're going to get you to an exfiltration site, you're going to be taken to Latin America. And the plan for Oswald would have been very simple. Leave your rifle in the Texas Book Depository, walk down the stairs nonchalantly, walk to the street corner, here and here, X marks the spot, and you'll be picked up he realized he didn't set up. He goes, I was a patsy. And now it's, I'm going to be set up for this whole thing. One hour and 20 minutes after the assassination of Kennedy, Oswald was arrested. Just confirmed that Texas Governor John Connolly also was shot at the same time as President Kennedy as the two men rode in the same car in a motorcade. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? Did you shoot the president? Did you shoot the president? We'll start a new life tomorrow. I promise.
Did you shoot the president? No, they're taking me in because of the fact that I, I lived in the Soviet Union. I'm just a patsy. Immediately after the arrest, a bulletin was sent to media across the US. It labeled Oswald a pro-Castro communist. This instantly established an image of Oswald as the culprit. Reporter Jefferson Morley has been trying to identify a possible ringleader. The bulletin was distributed by a New Orleans-based anti-Castro group called DRE. NHK's research uncovered clues linking the DRE with the CIA. In fact, before the assassination, the CIA was lavishly funding the DRE with $51,000 per month. The DRE, which is completely a CIA asset and funded by the CIA, that whole chain of events we now know was set up and orchestrated by CIA people. Oswald is the patsy and Cuba killed Kennedy. To follow up that lead, Morley helped us contact a significant former DRE figure. Okay. A former spokesperson for DRE, Jose Antonio Lanuza. He is the one who forwarded the Oswald information to the media right away. What happened is that CIA I think, based on what we have learned now, they wanted to have control of the delegation. I did, I did what a dog is supposed to do with a bone. And I did that. Lanusa acknowledges that he acted on behalf of the CIA. He also reveals who ran the DRE under the CIA's control in 1963. His name was Howard, and the nom de guerre, the nom name that he used, and that was George Ionides. George Ionides, a case officer active in New Orleans at the time. Internal CIA documents identify his operational specialty. Joannidis made use of DRE to conduct what the CIA called psychological warfare, propaganda. Joannidis paid the DRE for propaganda, political action, and intelligence collection. We're making public the idea that this guy was a communist, a Castro supporter, somebody who was on the other side. That's what this whole operation did, and that that was Joannidis job. Our reporting in this matter spotlights a group of CIA agents gone rogue. Good work. Who might have been positioned above rogue case officers of this kind? Good work. Thank you. Morley's search to pin down a figure who might have pulled the strings continues. Sometimes history takes a long time to resolve itself. And uh, this is what, we're going on 60 years. You know, it might take longer than that. It will take longer than that. The Warren Commission report 
concluded that there was no evidence that Lee Harvey Oswald was part of any conspiracy, domestic or foreign. But it contains nothing attributed to Oswald about any motive at all. I never, I never heard Lee say a bad word about President Kennedy. Not once. I never heard say a bad word against him. Lee was never happy. No matter where he was. I think perhaps Lee would be happy on the moon. Come, said my soul. Such verses from my body let us rot, for we are one. That should I have to return, or long, long hence in other spheres. There, to some group of mates, the chance resuming. Ever with pleased smile, I may keep on. Ever and ever yet the verse is Owen, as first I hear and now. Signing for soul and body, set to the my name. Every thoughtful citizen who despairs of war and wishes to bring peace should begin by looking inward, by examining his own attitude towards the possibilities of peace and towards freedom and peace here at home. Our problems are man-made, therefore they can be solved by man, and man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Man's reason and spirit have often solved the seemingly unsolvable, and we believe they can do it again. Fifty-seven years have now passed since the Kennedy assassination. The CIA responded to NHK's inquiries by stating that some materials cannot be released for reasons of national security. The CIA has never denied or affirmed any involvement in the assassination. <laughs> 